Here comes the nasty girl. Send a priest to save my soul. Forget it. Welcome back to the Nasty Graham RPG podcast. This is the Boston Masquerade, Chapter 9, Dark Legacies. Feeling it too hard is the poison to the heart of a sick Hey, this is Jake, and I will be your storyteller. And Matt, as Javi Morales, the Ventru entrepreneur. Hey everyone, this is Dan playing Quintus Lazar. I have no idea when I'm supposed to talk, but you know, with the help of friends, I am your lovable blood doctor. Hey guys, it's John. I'm playing Z, the Bruja hacker. Hey, it's Ryan. Um, sorry, Dan, I let you down there, but I'll be playing uh, Ethan Crane, the trust fund Ventru. This is Josh. I'll be playing Larry Murphy, Nosferatu Possum Papa. And let's kick it over to the Snack Shack. We're going to the Snack Shack. Snack Shack. <laughs> Coming at you live from the Snack Shack, this is Devin. Uh, I'll be on the ones and twos, and today I have cold junior mints and a Nutrigrain bar. Outstanding. Interesting. That was the Snack Shack. Boo! All right. Hit that music whenever you're ready, Devin. A few drops of blood trickle from a finger into a bowl and splash into the water. Blood to blood, heed the call. Blood to blood, heed the call. Beatrix, the danger at the casino has subsided, despite the prince's indifference. My coterie and I have a mutual secret with the lone gangle in the city Alexander. He was critical in avoiding the calamity. And while we may have acted against the prince's wishes, we averted a sizable disaster that could have brought unwanted attention to Boston. But perhaps more troubling news. I have discovered that someone still has copies of my research. Furthermore, they built upon my findings. They developed a weaponized blood pathogen that will infect kindred. To what end, I only assume final death. It was financed by a branch of the Inquisition, First Light. Apparently, it was defunded and shut down, but I have theories that suggest this disease has been put into play. And a kindred in the city, Lydia Marlowe, has pried the secret from the mind of a man out of the past and into the light. While it was not directly my doing, my welcome in the city may be short-lived if this information is discovered which is meaningless compared to the danger of this disease, Beatrix. It could be the end of us, and so few of us are interested in the actual science of our physiology. There may be few ways to stop it. I will find more answers. Kin, November 1st, 2022. Dr. Lazar's Laboratory. We see a needle slide carefully into a woman's arm and begin to fill with blood. The needle is removed and a sterile pad placed over the puncture mark. Not all vampire blood is created equally. A drop of elder blood has more power than a coterie of neonates. The needle is brought to a microscope and a single drop is placed next to another drop of blood on a small square of glass. See, a lot has to do with your sire. The closer you are to Cain... If you believe that kind of thing. Under the microscope, we see pale pink circles on the left, wriggling slightly. On the right, we see bright red circles twitching and moving across the slide. It also has to do with how long you've been a vampire. A blood is like a fine wine. It improves with age. The dark red cells attack the pale pink ones. They engulf them, making them part of themselves. Then they split apart into two cells... Within a few moments, all of the pale pink cells are consumed and replaced by the red. More powerful? See? Better? No. Like everything about our kind. More power, 
comes with a cost. As your blood grows stronger, so does the hunger. It makes it harder, just like your thirst. As we see a second blood slide, similar to the first. On the left is a pale pink, and on the right, the bright red. The red cells again attack the pink and attempt to envelop them, but they simply slide off and separate like oil in water. Quintus, you were thinking about the experiment you did earlier tonight before you left your laboratory. The troubling results as you watched Sergei's blood unable to absorb the human blood that you had put on the slide next to it. Unable to slake his hunger. You're in a car driving into the country west of Boston. You're going through an old apple orchard. You see these gnarled branches kind of reaching up. The full moon throwing their shadows across the road. And you swear for a moment that you see the shadow move like a fist closing around the car as you drive by. You're approaching an old Victorian style house in the country that is the home of Lydia Marlowe. In the car with you is Z. After what happened the night before, you all decided you needed answers. You needed to arrange some meetings right away. And the two of you got the pleasure of going to see Lydia. This is the place, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh... 121. Um, Quintus looks out at the kind of landscape, the only house yeah. out here. The only house surrounded by these old apple orchards. Very big, kind of three, four story house, kind of run down, decaying Victorian style. You see one window on in the top floor. I just want to give uh, my Ventru players, Matt, Ryan, your scene's coming up next, but I haven't decided who you're meeting with. So the two of you talk amongst yourselves. Pick two or three people in the city that you want to meet with. I know you have a list already, um, but who is the most? Yeah, you don't have to tell me right now. Just talk about it and figure out who's at your little meeting. The car pulls up in front of the house and a servant comes out and opens the door. Yeah, so she's... um. She's old, Quintus, and uh, just to keep an eye out. Keep, keep your wits about you, all right? You think she intends us harm? Uh, if she intended us harm, uh, I'm not sure what we'd be able to do about it. Um, but yeah, what uh, Larry was talking about, you know, intentions and all that, how I got it wrong. <clears throat> I... I I'm sorry. The door opens and the man who is standing there, you recognize him from Elysium. He's the uh, ghoul who took the phone number for you. What was his name? I don't know if we named him. I don't think so. No, I don't think you know. I don't think you got his name. He kind of nods to you, recognizing you, Z. Oh, hey. Come right this way. Sure, sure. Miss hey, Marlowe uh, is waiting for you. I didn't get your name. Trevor. Trevor. Hey, it's uh, good to see you again, Trevor. Quintus stays a few steps back from Z and lets him lead the way. Okay. Brings you up the steps into the house and into a parlor. Looks like a tea room. Lydia is not there, but there is a fire in the fireplace which is a little off-putting. Vampires don't like fire. There's also, on the small table, a file. You recognize it immediately, Quintus, as coming from STEM uh, Express. Look, Quintus, uh, had I known it was your buddy, I wouldn't have done it. I understand, Z. It is a... A misunderstanding. Have you talked to him? Uh, how's he doing? Brian is recovering. Yeah, that was only last night. Only 
a day ago for him. I fear how much we can manipulate a mind. I still do not understand these powers and their long-term effects. Yeah, you're telling me we, we almost did the same thing to... Remember the, the first guy on the, um, that we, me and Ethan tracked down? Ethan went, um, he went a little hard on him. We almost lost... Well, he almost lost himself. I... Yeah. Quintus you know, is sort of nodding his head slowly to what you're saying. I, I mean, I couldn't let a person just... You know, just wipe his mind like that. And that is my problem with this uh, Lydia... She knew I was involved, yet did not come to me. Yeah. John. Yep. Both of you, actually. The side door to the room opens. As it opens, some light from the room beyond comes in. But for a moment, Z, you think you see headlights coming down the driveway. You think you see another car approaching. You kind of snap out of it. You realize it wasn't really there. Um, you have a new power. Yeah, I picked up uh, level two aspects, and with that premonition, which lets you do whatever the hell you want as a storyteller, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically lets you fill in some vision I might have or some sense or some feeling. You, you get the sense that someone else is coming to this meeting. Fuck. Lydia walks in, but there's someone else on their way. I say, I, I kind of look out the window towards where our car was, is... Fuck. What is the problem? <sighs> when they come in, I say to Lydia. Excuse me? You got more guests coming? Or I is do. it just us? I do, actually. He'll be here shortly, and I believe he'll be able to answer some questions. Who's he? You're quite resourceful, Z. I wish we had met many years ago. I'm not so sure about that. You know, why didn't you tell me about Quintus and his partner? Because I didn't know if I could trust Quintus. When I began looking into this, I thought there was a very good chance I would be killing him. You're lucky that Brian cleared you of all wrongdoing, though. If I had found out that you did this on purpose, that your research was intended to harm our kind. Quintus is silent. He's watching her. She pauses and she says, I think in that case, the queen would have forgiven me for dealing with you preemptively. But alas, that is not the situation. She smiles. It is not. Because it was stolen from you. As you stole my friend's memories. You should have... Should have allowed them to remain missing. That was my intention. But that is the past. You what do you propose now? Well... What's going on? What have you unleashed? It is likely that uh, someone would have discovered it at some point. But there are pathogens that can be manipulated and it uh, can cause a sickness to the kindred. What I have to understand is how it was applied and to who. She nods. Please sit. She comes in the room and sits down out of the doorway. How is she dressed? The same way she's always dressed, sort of outside of of the time period, kind of the way that she almost cosplay, like, uh, you know, yeah. sure. old-fashioned turn-of-the-century dress. Um, she sits down, kind of folds the, the, the frills of the front of the dress down and says, I'm sorry about what I did to your friend. And I'm sorry that I had to lie to both of you about all of it. Look, I hope you can understand yeah, why. The gravity is uh, is hitting us, for sure. I mean, if there's a virus and it gets out... I mean, Quintus, there's got to be a way 
a cure, a vaccine, something? Quintus kind of looks back to Z and then to Lydia. That would take uh, research and that I have not had time for. You see headlights coming down the driveway. Uh, Jake, Mm -hmm. I activate my heightened senses. Okay. As the headlights approach, you see a limousine coming down the drive. And Lydia says, when I found out that Brian was working for First Light, I reached out to someone who knows them intimately. Someone who has been manipulating them from the shadows for quite some time. And he was kind enough to fly in from Washington to meet with us. Washington? Wow. I, I see the limousine now, and now that's kind of in the, in the, uh, kind of turned away, and the headlights are pointing away. <clears throat> I fear I didn't, uh, I didn't dress up enough for this. Hmm. He is kindred? He is my progeny. (laughs) 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 Oh, the music is amazing. The door to the limo opens and out steps. See a man in his late 40s wearing a custom tailored three piece suit. He steps out, puts a top hat on, and uh, flourishes a cane and slowly walks towards the door. A man follows behind, closing the door, walks up and uh, knocks on the door. Servant lets him in, brings him into the room. Fuck, who is he cast by? Um, It was Anthony Hopkins. Yes. (laughs) I was just thinking that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As uh, the door swings open, you see his features a little clearer. You can picture him played by a uh, young to middle age, Anthony Hopkins. Picture him on the bounty. And uh, he has sort of a, just an air about him. He's a bit paunchy, but he kind of moves with a, a grace that defies his figure. As and his he, cane. As he taps on the door frame with his cane and says, Mother, <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, dear. She stands up and comes over to you and what do you think they imber- they they give a little hug yeah a hug kiss yeah. on the cheek very uh mr kingsley thank you so much for flying in lydia it is a delight to see you once again in the flesh i see you have guests may i introduce quintus lazar he holds out his hand he walks over to you and uh, shakes it. As, as he moves towards you, you actually see the shadows kind of close in mm-hmm. around you. Shakes your hand, looks right in your eyes, just kind of really measures, measures, <laughs> yep. and walks over to Z. And Z. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. He walks back. The shadows kind of recede. Please sit. Uh, uh, he kind of makes a show of creaking out his leg as he sits, <laughs> leans his cane up on the side. Z is the computer expert I told you about. <laughs> the one that helped me get this information about First Light. And, well, I'm sure you've seen the name Dr. Lazar many times. Indeed I have. It's nice to put a face to the name. It was uh, not my intention for my research to be uh, manipulated as such. Hmm. Intentions. It's an interesting topic. Perhaps we can delve into it on a philosophical manner another time. Let's talk of the here and now, though. Shall we? I understand you have some questions, and uh, I may as well. Before you arrived, I was telling them, When I learned about Project Attrition and its relation to First Light, I naturally reached out to you immediately. And, well, when I told Mr. Kingsley that there was a chance that someone in our city was infected, he was on a plane almost immediately. 
Hmm. Indeed, it was my understanding, perhaps my intention, that Project Attrition was ended with some finality about six months ago. It was quite a surprise to me to hear the name bantied about in your newly turned city up here. And how how are the Camarilla making out here? How is your dear queen? It's asking two of the wrong people. <laughs> as ruthless as ever. Hmm. You know, some people think Washington, D.C. Uh, is a complicated place. You know, it is a uh, contested. I find it quite convenient at times. Camry and Sabat side by side. How much we can accomplish when we just learn to work together. A mutual threat will do that. Indeed. And maybe even more than that. But anyways, about this disease, was there ever any cure? Well, the same cure as you might find uh, if you flip to those early chapters. Old Testament. Purge. Fire. Cure is the elimination. I will say that without understanding some of the work that was done by First Light, I cannot answer very many questions. But we would have to know if and how it spreads amongst the humans and how it spreads among the kindred. Do we know what it does? Does it simply force you to frenzy? It uh, means, the disease means that you cannot uh, gain sustenance, that the vampiric uh, disease, if you will, your blood, which normally transforms human plasma, they do not uh, commingle. They do not... Mm. Vampiric blood is usually the dominant one. In this case, it is no longer. Well, would you... uh Bear with me if uh, I could give you a little background on Project Attrition. Forgive me if I labor on a bit long. Some of my <laughs> peers back in Congress used to mention it so, but Project Attrition began a couple years back. I've had uh, my ears and eyes close to first light for, well, pretty close to its inception. The enemy you know, as it were, Project Attrition was ambitious, frightfully so. Indeed, as our, our dear doctor has informed us, that was the intent. An infected human who carried that virus, or whatever you would call it. When they were fed on, they would pass that along to their predator, who would then become the host. They would then no longer be able to slake their hunger. Not just that time, but any time following. The efforts were ambitious in nature. There was discussion and some fierce proponents in Project First Light to spread this to the entire population. That's idiotic. I mean, you're going to have hundreds of vampires with no control over themselves loose upon the population, murdering hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of innocent civilians. Well, he picks up quick, does he not, Lydia? You find to surround yourself with such useful people. <laughs> Indeed, and uh, fortunately, with some gentle coercion and nudging, cooler, calmer voices prevailed. The costs were too great. Project Attrition was terminated. There were some unfortunate hiccups. Perhaps perhaps you can fill me in some on your end. There was a subject, a fairly young Tremere from Philadelphia. She was taken to be patient zero, studied in a lab outside Fredericksburg, and uh, <laughs> it bore fruit. They poked and prodded, twisted and turned. 
and found that did everything they wanted. But of course, as we, they decided to end the project, well, we have to clean it all up. Of course, this was to be swept right under the rug. However, someone intervened. Someone quite ferocious. Strong powers of obfuscation. Skill with a blade. Quick beyond belief. Went into a first light hard sight. Took this young Tremere out. Slaughtered seven tier one first light operators. Made away. Well, shit. She was a slender girl, fine petite, human age in her young 20s, dark hair, striking features. That sounds like a fart. <laughs> Sound uh, perhaps familiar to you all? She does. And I believe that Sergei was her sire. And she is... No? Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> Sergei's Peter's sire. That, that's I it. see it. Yep. Oh, I see the connection there. I say, <clears throat> she does. I believe she resides in Boston. And she still uh, lives? As it were? Very interesting. Interesting indeed. Why hasn't this hunger consumed her, Quintus? It is possible that she has been very careful and she has not had the need to eat this is unlikely but uh, perhaps there is something in what my people call blood magic that would be quite the sorcery this happened on a cool April morning over six months ago yeah I mean no matter how careful you are, you gotta eat. This is true. Shit, and she's talking to the prince. Sydney is unusual, as are many in my clan, as to their powers that they may manipulate. She seems to be popping up everywhere in the city. The prince isn't the only one she talks to. Do you... Do you think maybe she has both the virus and the cure? She has an immunity. She was given an immunity by these scientists or whatever. Quintus kind of tilts his head back and forth and he says, this is possible. If they were truly trying to experiment and understand the scope of uh, their disease, then yes, they may have infected her with both. To see its result. Uh, if that's the case, then we gotta get our hands on her. Who broke her out? Skill with a blade and speed, that sounds like Fiona. There's no one as fast or as good with an axe as her. Does she... Does she have the power to hide herself? She shrugs. Uh, do I know that? I've been... Since 2004, so... You don't know. Yeah, I mean, obviously that kind of stuff um, gets a little bit... She's quite old. I'm sure she's learned a few tricks. <sighs> yeah. I may have something to point you in a direction that would be enlightening, mutually. There was a operator, First Light, one of the strongest advocates of their national solution... He became quite disillusioned following the decision to abandon the project. As far as I know, he has the only copies of the surveillance videos, as well as some other information, files, and materials. He has gone to the ground in the north. You got a name? I do. You know what we say in Washington? Z? I don't. Nothing costs more than information. <clears throat> All right. Well, what's the cost? 
Quintus leans back in his chair. <laughs> Recovery. What he has, other than the surveillance video, I want it all. And this guy is a badass. True believer. True believer? One of the... One of the ones they talk about out there at five in the morning, training, getting ready for the fight. Yeah. Every day. Why haven't you taken it yourself? Well, there's some concerns. He is uh, isolated from first light of his own accord, but going after him directly is uh, always has the potential to raise eyebrows. My greatest strength is the company I keep. To endanger that, well, but if it was someone else unconnected to me, well, then we'd just be helping each other out. This is a simple thing to say, uh, whatever else he has. Can you be more specific? No, I cannot. Well, Quintus, I mean, if he took some of that info, there might be... Documents, files, whatever, samples, whatever the fuck you scientists have of this antibody or cure. Obviously, I can't keep you from peeking your eyes at it. You can enlighten yourself as long as they end up in my hands. Trust me, son. I can do more with them than you can. Not a slight, carefully cultivated community. And I think Mr... Kingsley has made it clear that he wants, as much as us, to keep this from getting out. Yeah. I do so detest this modern flat, as necessary as it is. So to come up here and see you all, please know that it is uh, outside my preferred area of operations. I think there is a train... From D.C. No time for that. John, you're so obsessed with trains. I love trains. <laughs> <laughs> not for this. That's how important this is. Yeah. You are not incorrect. This is a matter of... It is a matter of our survival. He looks at you very carefully and measured. I keep my eyes on first light, but their eyes are always looking back. And I will be tucked in my own comfy bed when morning strikes. And whatever you are to do with Kenneth Masters in his home in Etna, Maine, quaint little town I've heard outside Bangor. I visited there as a young man. My forays to the town of Boston at that time. Quite exciting. City on a hill. Well, if you need an extra pair, well, <clears throat> yeah. I think uh, I'll bring it up with Javi. But, uh, I mean, if it's going to help us, Quintus, one way or another, if we can prove Sydney is the patient zero, we can... I don't know. But who broke her out and to what end? What right. is their game? Quintus yeah. is going to, looking out the window, trying to, obviously, thinking through the different avenues and he turns back to Yuzi and he says I believe the coterie will agree this is a, a matter of urgency and we must all act in good faith he looks between Lydia and um, Kingsley. Kingsley. Kingsley indeed doctor bear in mind this is mutually beneficial but also keep in mind, this goes far beyond your city here, or even mine. These matters could affect all of our kind. I am a scientist, so I do understand how politicians bend our work. Hmm. Yes, well, just as First Light has its fanatics, well, in our own circles we have those who would seek perhaps more aggressive solutions. Why, Lydia, would you believe my, my own progeny, dear David? Hmm. Well, 
He was keen on a quicker resolution, but I convinced him that this would be a better course. Let's hope things don't come to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, gentlemen, do you have everything you came for? Yeah, I think. She stands and kind of walks towards the door. Uh, Kingsley, what will it cost for you? He, Z pulls out a USB, small little USB drive and like fiddles it in his hand. What will it cost you to plug these one of the, this into one of the first light machines? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I mean, I could help with your little crusade against first light. Yes. Every young up and comer thinks they're the only one who knows how to make love properly, don't they? <laughs> We, uh, I also know how to surround myself with useful people. All right. I've done it before. I'm sorry to tell you, Z, but you remember I told you about our clan. <laughs> oh, yeah. If my progeny takes that device and plugs it into a computer, there's a good chance it stops working. Well, it was worth a shot. He puts the USB back in his pocket. Well, uh, Kingsley stands with a sigh and kind of massages his leg. He, as she's kind of seeing you to the door, she says, you just carry it around like a loaded gun, though, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never know when you're going to need it. Well, Lydia, if you're seeing your guests out, there's a few more matters I'd like to speak you speak with you on before I have to make my return. It was a pleasure to meet both of you, and uh, I look forward to the resolution of this matter. Agreed. We will provide you with whatever contents we may find. Yeah. yeah it's good meeting you. Quintus exits out through the door, yeah. kind of looks back up at the house. You see them move back into that parlor through the window and sit down and continue talking. Well, you shit. see Kingsley laughing at something she says. <laughs> <laughs> it's all connected. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Meanwhile, we are in the boardroom at Kin. <laughs> Who's in the boardroom? Uh, it is Javi. There is Ethan, along with Sean Clark and Leonidas Turst. All Uncle right. Sean! <laughs> we got two of the primogen, two of the biggest names in the city in the room with you. For Leonidas, he's been here a few times. Uh, Mr. Clark doesn't doesn't get out very often. Very busy man. From what the two of you know, he's also quite a rich man. Pharmaceuticals. <clears throat> so, Sean Clark, played by Idris Elba, um, in his finely tailored Javi original suit, sits down at the table across from Donald Sutherland, <laughs> Leonardo, <laughs> Leonidas Turris. We've got quite a fucking cast at this table. Everyone here is, uh, is wearing Javi Originals. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. It's a good-looking room. Yeah. And um, Mr. Clark is the first to speak. He says, really like what you two have done with the place. Uh, sorry I wasn't able to get down for the grand opening. Gracias. Es no problem. I understand. Kindred are talking about it, though, saying they like it. See? Fits a need. I want to do something a little different. You know, it was kind of uh, a little too goth. I mean, from my taste here before, it was cool. I mean, uh, you know, due respects, uh, uh, Mr. Turst, it was uh, um, just kind of a little, I mean, a little dark for me. So I want to kind of, you know, bring it up a little bit. <laughs> I... You misjudge my age. <laughs> May look like I was around in the Gothic era, but I was not. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clock, they shake hands. Is the uh, first time? Oh, no. We, you know, the prince has meetings with us every few months. Us primogen. See, see, see. How's, uh, how's she doing? He shrugs. <laughs> it's been a 
been a lot happening, see, ever since Sergei's uh, situation. Leonidas says, so why have I been asked to meet with three-fourths of the clan Ventru? Do you have a business proposition for me? Hmm. Sean Clark says, I'm as in the dark as you are. <laughs> what is it, gentlemen? And we had asked um, uh, one of your fellow Tremere's to be here as well, uh, Leonidas, but um, apparently she's not coming. She did have the right time, right? We, yeah. See? Uh, she decided she had other things to do? Maybe. But, uh, I mean, Sydney's name's coming up a lot in these parts, so we just wanted to uh, talk to her a little bit about what's been going on. See what she knows, see if we can enlighten her a little bit. Maybe she can enlighten us, you know? Uh, I don't keep tabs on other members of my clan. We're not the way we used to be. Not as tight-knit. When the Chantry fell and the blood bond was lifted from us, we regained our free will again. We may have lost the power to blood bond other vampires, but in my opinion, it is something I was happy to lose in return from being freed of the shackle of the Tremere clan. We are our own keepers now. Well, that's very good. I I think with uh, some information that's come to us, we thought maybe both of you should know. It has to do uh, with Sergei. Uh, I know... Monsieur, uh, Senor Thirst, you know, keep too many tabs, but a circus situation is uh, huh, unique. M- Mr. Clark, you heard of uh, STEM Express? Dan, do you think STEM Express is big enough to be on his radar? <laughs> if he's in pharmaceuticals, yes. Okay. He nods. He says, yeah. You know some of uh, what they do? He says, I'm, I'm familiar with them. Well, it seems um, they're working with First Light. There's uh, a virus. Something... More than just a a frenzy. Leonidas says, a virus that affects kindred. See? It was seen. The others of us, uh, they are trying to find some answers. Leonidas looks at uh, Sean Clark and says, is this one of your companies, this STEM Express? Do you own it? And he shakes his head no. He's Sean Clark. He's actually on his. He's looking at his cell phone. He messaged someone, and within a moment, he says, "That's why it sounds familiar." What does this have to do with? What does this have to do with uh, the Tremere? Well, it will seem Sergey is the first. Sergey is the first to be infected. And how does it pass from one to another? Don't know. Leonidas says, if you take me to Sergei, I might be able to find out more. I may be able to learn from his blood. Oh, see? More than uh, Quintus can. (laughs) You know, it's part of his research. Quintus is quite young, I assure you. My abilities with blood magic are far more advanced. Do not mean to offend, I I am sure. But if this is in fact some sort of virus, it would not be the first that First Light has created. They have other other things. And there's one particularly nasty one I remember. It was a bacteria that breaks down dead tissue. When a vampire is infected, their body would slowly decompose. 
When was this? Sean says, I've heard of it too. And then there's the red mist and they've got all kinds of things. This is just one of many. They're always looking for new tools to kill us with. <clears throat> well, I thought it would be beneficial for all of us if uh, you knew a little more what was happening. Clark says, have you started contact tracing him? No. Well, you got to get get that doctor on it. We got to find out who he could have infected, where he got it, who he could have passed it on to. This is basic stuff. Hmm. Just make a make nice clothes. Well, clean up messes. He looks at Ethan. And he says, "Google it. Contact tracing. It's pretty simple." Oh no, I remember that from a few years back. Yeah, as a thing. <laughs> Terse says it may not be so simple to trace if you haven't figured out how it spreads yet. Mm. But if this is, in fact, uh, something that's been weaponized, you're right in telling us it's important that all the kindred of the city be aware that we need to be careful where our food comes from until this is under control. Um, yeah. I guess we do. Quintus really hasn't told us much about his research, has he? No. No. Clark says, do we have any idea how Sergei got it? Where he got it from? No, yeah. Hopefully when uh, Quintus and Z get back from meeting with uh, <laughs> someone, we can have more answers. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. Sure says... Are you opposed to us informing the other primogen? Malkavian? Mr. Geller, Mr. Boyle. See? I think, uh... Well... I hope Mr. Boyle knows. Clark says... We gotta tell... We gotta tell the prince, too. See? I can take care of that. He stands up, he says, Well, thank you for the warning. <clears throat> Watch what you eat, gentlemen. <laughs> he says, I already have my people looking into STEM Express. If they find anything out, I'll have them send it your way. Gracias. And, and uh, uh, anything we know, I'll reach out. Clark leaves. And then before uh, Leonidas leaves, <clears throat> He, he says, uh, once Clark is gone, he says, Why would you invite the most low-ranking vampire in the city to this meeting? What is your interest in Miss Tybalt? She has uh, come up in many places. A lot of the things we look into, the people we've talked to, she seems to show up. Also, uh, how long has she been here? Maybe, maybe six months. See, very new, huh? Yes, she does seem to be connected already to a lot of other kindred. See, spends, uh, I guess she spends a lot of time with a prince. That's not the only one she spends a lot of time with. We'll see. <clears throat> I suggest you find her. Hmm. I think that's our next priority. See me, ho. See. As he's leaving, he says, I'd also suggest you have Dr. Lazar test her blood. Not under a microscope. The other way. Gracias. He leaves. Me. Case the other way. <laughs> <laughs> you remember. You remember back to the first night your coterie gathered when Dr. Lazar took a knife out of a dead man's hand 
tasted the blood off the blade and was able to tell you things just by tasting the blood about the person it came from, about Sergei. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, What's your hunger out there, uh, Quintus? None of your goddamn business. <laughs> I uh, appreciate it if you stay out of my personal affairs. <laughs> No, it's just like in the movies when they, you know, lick the drugs or whatever. <laughs> it doesn't affect them. It just lets them know what it is. Is this the scene where Quintus coughs into a handkerchief and there's <laughs> hot blood and he hides it? <laughs> or is King saying, well, it seems you have a case of consumption. <laughs> Perhaps a dry climb. <laughs> All right. We're at, we see a crowd going through the gate at Fenway Park. Regular season is over, but there's a minor league teams playing and making their way through the crowd. We see Sebastian wearing a classic style Red Sox um, jersey and a Cubs hat. And next to him is Larry. So what, what we see Larry is an wearing? Amber Alert. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a friendly uncle. Larry has a big foam finger, number one. <laughs> uh, Larry is wearing a vintage Ted Williams baseball jersey. What's Johnny wearing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cutest little baseball outfit. You know those little, like, um, carriages for dogs? <laughs> <laughs> is this the time to announce Service that animal. we were Service. officially followed by, like, Opossum Instagram. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be big for us. Yeah. It's gonna open a lot of doors. <laughs> a lot of possum doors. Stretch I think it's goals. a possum premium. Yeah, yeah. there's a premium. All kinds of possibilities. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Give a f- <laughs> if you're on Instagram, <laughs> give a follow to opossum underscore lover ig. Oh, <laughs> amazing! <laughs> oh, it's just so good. You make your way through the gate. You're going through the kind of concession area. Sebastian says, "Oh, um, I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some snacks." He gets in line. He gets a giant drink and a chocolate chip cookie. You guys keep walking. I always liked fall baseball the best. The cool nights when I was your age. The Red Sox didn't get to play many games in October. <laughs> because they were really bad. Yeah. Yeah. It was a long stretch, but, you know, somebody told me once that the best baseball are the teams that aren't doing as well. Because when you're there, it's the most real. It's only the real fans that are there. The people that care about their team in the city. It's easy when something is popular and is doing really well. Everybody wants to be a part of it. It matters a lot more when you're there when it's down. Hmm. Are you... He stops walking and he says, Are you talking about me and Melanie? I think it can relate to other things. Our kind are fickle. So many of them just grasp to power. You'd think with the existence that we have, we would let slip that mortal desire, that desperation. We have all the time in the world. He says, well, we haven't decided what to do when the queen leaves. We're going to wait and see who wins. He (laughs) starts walking again. He stops. Larry stops and picks up a program. You're walking past the bathrooms and you see this kid a little a little younger than Sebastian. Kind of whining to his mother, saying he doesn't want to go into the bathroom without her. And Sebastian says, hold on a second. And he walks over to them and he says, I can show him. It's easy. Come on. And he takes the kid by the hand 
and they walk into the bathroom. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and the mother turns to you and smiles. And it's... You, you're you used to getting that sort of polite or scared smile from humans, from women especially. This is genuine. And it's... It, it probably hasn't happened to you in a very long time. And she says, he's a very nice boy. Larry smiles and nods his head. Yes. The, the lines for the family bathrooms are always so long, and I, I, he just doesn't like going in alone. Don't worry. He's a good boy, and he's always looking out for people. That's good. You, you really raised him well. Well. She smiles again. <laughs> Larry <laughs> kind of puts a smile on his face that fits a little awkwardly. Nice night for a baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> she she says, oh, yeah, yeah. A few minutes later, they come out after awkwardly standing there quietly. And she <clears> says, <throat> Larry's like, whoo! She puts, a, <laughs> she puts a hand on your shoulder and says, thank you so much. And her and her son who looks maybe a little woozy, <laughs> walk away. <laughs> Sebastian keeps walking and takes a sip out of his cup. <laughs> God damn it. And he, wow. offers it, he offers it to you. <laughs> I'm good right now. Thank you, Sebastian. Are you sure? He's quite excited to be here. I understand. I like a different flavor. More peaceful. Hmm. Your sister didn't want to come to the game? Oh, no. I think I think there's too many voices. Too many people talking all at once and yelling and shouting. She's very sensitive to lots of noises. I, I understand, and I'm glad that you wanted to go. I don't really like crowds either, but... I just really like coming here. Do you know how to score a game? Um, no. They do it with computers and phones now, but I always like to do it the old-fashioned way. We sit down and he opens his program and <laughs> Larry starts describing how to score a game as they... As the game goes on, you notice a few times... When you're with Sebastian, people seem to look at you and treat you a little bit different. Something about being with a little kid that makes you seem less threatening. And it's a weird feeling for Larry. Hmm. It's a, a weird sensation to, to not have people automatically kind of recoil in your presence. Is, he, the, is this Jake projecting? It's true. <laughs> the worst thing about being a father people just walk is that you. people just start conversations with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, don't talk to me. Yeah. I want to be unapproachable. Larry probably <laughs> settles a little bit more. Yeah, pu right. you know, yeah, public, yeah. If you're if you're on a playground with someone <laughs> and uh, it's okay just to let the kids play and not talk, to them. yeah, just, yeah. just totally you know, okay. for for reference out there, it's okay. A parental public <laughs> <Yeah>. service announcement. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, Larry probably notices that and probably is less aggressive with pulling mm -hmm. his the brim on his uh, baseball cap down and starts to get a little bit yeah. more comfortable. It's you. You're feeling you're having a good time. Um, about halfway through the game, it's kind of a, getting a little boring, and Sebastian says, Melanie said you were going to tell me a story. If you'd like to hear it, it's not a pleasant story. He just waits. She wanted to know about what happened with me and... Sebastian, right? <laughs> I'm fucking up now. Santiago. 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 Oh, fucking <laughs> She wanted to know what happened between me and Santiago. You can share this with her, of course. Not many people know. It happened when we were fighting to take the city. You know about this? He nods. It was in 
1999. I had only been turned for less than a year. I was given my first important task by Mr. Boyle from Fiona. She wasn't the prince then. We were infiltrating a particularly dangerous clan. Have you ever heard of the Samisi? He, you see like a kind of a grimace come over his face and he says, I have. I put my newfound powers to the test. I was inside, waiting and learning, finding their haven. I was afraid, afraid they would find me and destroy the new life, the new existence I had a chance for. But it was important. Mr. Boyle and Fiona were counting on me. And then a man came in. I knew who it was. It was Santiago's ghoul and his lover. He was trying to learn first. Larry just kind of shakes his head and he puts his hands down on his arm and kind of looks down, really looking back into his own mind. They knew I was there. They knew what we were doing. But he wanted the glory. And when they discovered him, I was in the darkness and I had to watch as they tore him piece by piece. There was nothing I could do. I would have been destroyed. It wouldn't have gained us anything. Santiago knew I was there. He never forgave me. But if I had someone I cared about that much, I would never put them in that risk for my own glory. He turns and tries to put a smile on his face. He says, like I said, it's not a pleasant story. I think about it often. Have you apologized to him? Or talked to him at all? No. I tried to once. He spat in my face it's happened to me before and he said you're as hideous inside as you are on the out it's important that you make peace with him I mean it's important for you I think because you're not going to forgive yourself until you do that but it's also important because a lot of people don't realize, but technically Santiago is the Torador Primogen. It doesn't really matter usually, since Fiona's the prince, but when Fiona's gone, he'll have a vote in who replaces her. It's the second time this evening that he's said when Fiona is gone. <laughs> I haven't talked to anybody about this since... I talked to Mr. Boyle when it happened. He said, It was foolish, don't worry about it. There's nothing I could do. I do feel guilty, but I also feel angry. I'm angry that he did that, that he sent him there. I'm guilty of having to be there and watch it, and I'm angry from the memories he left me with I don't it's not easy for me Sebastian to speak with mortal or kindred I don't think Seba <laughs> I don't think Santiago wants my apology but I don't know <laughs> he stops for a moment and he says if Fiona were to leave, 
What do you and your sister want to happen? What do you think would be for the best? The only thing we've ever wanted is a safe place to live. We want stability. Who do you think would give that if Fiona were gone? Your sire might. And Melanie says he wants to be Prince. Alexander, maybe? He's good, even though he's made some mistakes. Melanie says he made a really big mistake. Sometimes a mistake is just a decision from a different point of view. He leans over and he whispers, Melanie says Alexander diablerized his sire. <laughs> Larry kind of slowly nods his head, processing that. And that's where we'll end that scene. <laughs> Whoa. Nothing like eating someone's soul. <laughs> Your dad's. Yeah. <laughs> if I remember, that's frowned upon. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Souls. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to jump to later that night. Z and Quintus have gotten back from their meeting. Board meeting with the Ventru is over. And Larry is back from the baseball game. And you all meet up in Quintus's laboratory to discuss everything that has happened up to this point to put the pieces together and go. <laughs> I roll with pieces. I roll. Can yeah, I roll? Check. Can I roll to put the pieces that? together? Has anyone rolled to die this game? No. Nope. Oh, cool. Uh, Can but, I ask uh, a mechanical question? Yes. Shoot. Um, I did have a couple points of willpower from our last, uh, I don't know what we mm. want to call it, but the module. What do you what do you <laughs> right, call right. it when you? What's between <laughs> chapter and uh, arc? Vignette? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, yeah. <laughs> book, and like, you know, book. like a lot of yeah, a lot of like bigger books are from divided the second into books. book. I, yeah. I had uh, two points of willpower expended. One might have even been from the first one, but I haven't recovered any. I don't know the process for that. Um, how? <laughs> uh, all right. How about we'll do it this way. You want to give me an argument for why you would recover it based on your um, desires or or um, maybe based on your ambition? Yes, I think, well... Something like that? He accomplished his first desire, which he was did. to establish a domain. He has a new desire, peace for Paige. And I think he has made steps towards his ambition which okay. is learning the secrets of the powers of boston okay yeah recover a willpower point and um we did spend experience last game what did you what did you do um so i've i kind of was going off what happened last game mm. you know to, mm -hmm. sh to shape it mm -hmm. so he actually put another point into obfuscate and took ghost in the machine Ooh. Um, Ooh. and i think he probably asked z to help him sort of work on this um, so essentially his powers of obfuscate now extend to surveillance, electronic equipment, cool. That's wild. cameras, shit like that. Nice. So does it, do you, are you just not seen or does it like scramble them? It can scramble, delete it, look blurred. You, there's still a role you add dice to it. Um, hmm. so the general effect is that it, it twists it rather than like, you're just not there. Yes. That's because okay, cool. you are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like the La Samba power in reverse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I thought it was appropriate because of. Yeah. You know, yeah. dealing with that and Casino. Larry, you know. That's cool. Having sort of a fear of technology and this sort of being a way to mm -hmm. confront it. And then uh, actually put one point into persuasion. Cool. Yes. Because I think Larry is yeah. trying to learn to sometimes work with his peers. Cool. <laughs> How about you, uh, Dan? Quintus, loot down any willpower? Uh, Do you have, want to make an argument for why you'd recover some? I mean, a lot of <laughs> it uh, is actually kind of the same align along the same uh, uh story points as Josh, which is uh, his desire was to set up his laboratory. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, his ambition is still a broader thing, which is to discover a viable blood source that doesn't rely necessarily mm. on humans. Yep. But uh, I'm kind of waist deep in, I think you also cut, you did protect your, um, your touchstone as well. Yes. You made sure that, yep. you know, the, 
that he was kind of protected. Right. Um, so yeah, and uh, I so deliberately re- left all of his one. name out from my report to my. Side. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. You can recover one as well. And cool. um, did you get anything fun with your experience? Yeah, I upped my auspex mm-hmm. uh, to. Well, I I upped it, but I took a first level power, which is the heightened sentence cool. senses, and uh, and then I took a variety of skills. He's uh, rounding himself out. Okay. He was previously. Cool very focused on kind of the academic side, but his little break in his caper with Larry, <laughs> uh, he took a point like of it. stealth, a point of larceny, uh, and a point of awareness. Awesome. Yep. John, what do you, I am down to uh willpower. I will say that, uh, Z is working on his, Ambition of dismantling the Camarilla. <laughs> pretty, pretty, uh, wow. You're not supposed to say that one aloud. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> That's a for internal monologue only. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, for his ambition, that that um, he's working towards that. And my desire, which I need to update, was find a coterie. Cool. Um, yeah, think of a new one. Um, I'm going to give you a willpower, not for that, but for uh, I, I I think you did a really good job role playing your. Um, your mounting anger um, yeah. at the casino. Um, so Jackal. Just for for that that were that was really good. Um, as far as dismantling the Camarilla, I think you need to make a few steps. Actual like yeah, tiptoe into yeah, the yeah. water. But but uh, but recover a point for that. Cool. And uh, did you uh, get any cool stuff with your XP? Yeah. So um, I I also upped my aspects to two, but I took uh, premonition, which is uh, what you used for allowing me to know that there was going to be another person at the meeting. Um, and then uh, for points, I also took, I took a point of leadership and a point of politics. Cool. The premonition thing is very cool. Like if you think classic, like vampires in movies, yeah. mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. they like pick up something like a minute or two before yeah. it happens. Yeah. Ryan, what about, uh, what about Ethan? Um, I need to update my ambition okay. and desires. So, um, because I don't think they really apply all that much anymore. Uh, so I don't think I have uh, done anything to all right. re-earn, regain my one willpower. What did you do to, uh, what did you upgrade with uh, stats? Um, I'm going to, uh, I, I think once we're, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to find a manager uh, for the club. <laughs> uh, and that's going to, that's going to be some of my, um, I'm going to put that into, you're going to put that into, um, retainer. Retainer. retainer? Yeah. Retainer. Yeah. So I'll do yeah. a couple, probably a couple cool. points in that. Retainer. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. That's all. That's all I've decided right. so far. Matt. Uh, Javi has not really done anything direct for his ambition and desire, uh, as for experience. I just added a couple of points into insight. Uh, he's been kind of paying attention to the way everybody's been handling themselves in this quarterie and watching them and kind of trying to get a baseline of their reactions and mannerisms to be able to better read them. All right. And cool. others. Cool. 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 Could I uh, make a campaign point for Matt? Go. He, he's been, uh, Javi's been, rubbing shoulders and shaking hands with some of the primogen, some of the very powerful yes. vampires in the city. It's true. Yeah. Definitely. A nomination from the snack shack. Recover one, one Devin willpower. Nice. It's like so. a, the golden buzzer from the, no. <laughs> um, Go right to Hollywood. All right. So here we are in Quintus's laboratory, putting the pieces together. Ethan has a uh, a Charlie Day esque um, like uh, contact tracing sheet already like, <laughs> figured out. So Quintus, you're gonna start here, um, and we got everyone who's uh, you know back from the dollhouse. It's, it's a, there's a lot of people. We I am track. aware of how why, contact like, tracing works. Okay, but why why haven't like why isn't because we do not know how it spreads. Um, but wow. if you found who like if you you know t- took blood from various people on this contact tracing sheet, we'd be able to find out like who has it. And then we could probably determine who it's, how it spreads from that. I'm just saying like, I'm, you know, I'm not a medical professional, um, but your, your role as uh, but chief I, medical officer uh, is, uh, is in de- is in jeopardy here. T- two week lockdown and we will be out of this problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not a medical expert, but I went on WebMD. Yeah, listen, I've been, <laughs> 
uh, very well. Uh, why don't you gather those who uh, Sebastian was closest to, and I will begin uh, drawing blood. Well, we, we do know how Sergey. 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 Sorry. Everyone I'll get, is Sebastian. I'll get, I'll get Melanie yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and Larry here, and we're good to go. <laughs> well, we, we, we do know how it spreads. That's what Kingsley told us. Yeah. Are we going to say that we kind of already covered yeah, some of the ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Spreads through the blood. It spreads through the blood, but uh, I do not know if the humans themselves would they, they would they would have the virus, right? Uh, I, mean, I mean, it would make it makes sense. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm not. We're not scientists. <laughs> We're not scientists. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am trying to reserve judgment until I can actually research the matter. The, the problem that I have is if it exists only in the vampire, it assumes that we would all feed off of said vampire, not spread amongst the humans. Well, he was saying that the whole idea was that they were going to infect the entire uh, United States and then vampires would feed on them and all hell would break loose. If only there were some sort of vaccine they could have given I everyone know. around like 2020. <laughs> 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 This game's too real, Jake. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if, if it's like that, then... And Sergey had it. Maybe he fed on a couple other people, and they all have it. We must find uh, the girl, Sydney. Yeah, she's... Uh, yeah, something happened at first. Like, she was patient zero. The but, timelines align, do they not? Uh, see? The primogen said he has. She has been here for six months, which is. So has she been spreading it around the city then? What do we need a contract tra- trace Sydney too? It is very important that we understand her movements okay. and. <clears throat> but how? How she give it to him? She fed on someone, and and then he fed on someone. I Maybe think, I think we know who. The, yeah. I think before. See, Pero, I'm. Uh, do you think it could affect the ghouls? I do. We oui. didn't. She, uh, Matt. Do you think you told us that Sydney asked you about that? If you'd fed on them? Yeah, probably. Okay. I think it was it was Ethan who. Yeah. Was that, yeah. Was I clear enough on that one? I said I think we know who. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think before we find Sydney, we should know more. What you talked about, what we could learn at that site in Maine. Kenneth Masters. If we know, we can confirm it's Sydney, which we have every reason to believe, but we have evidence. And who took her? Because it's not just what is happening, it's why what the motivations are if it was Fiona well shit I mean she's a, she's a walking time bomb I mean if Fiona wants to get rid of someone she can get rid of anyone she wants she sends her little assassin her little virus assassin lady feeds on one of our ghouls or uh, whatever and we feed on them and we're dead if Fiona is the one that took Sydney then she's not trying to get rid of her she is, wants her for something. It is more complicated, Z, as you pointed out, that uh, if you were to do this, you would have chaos. You would have murder on your hands. Not if you're careful. So, um, are you, Z, are you implying that, that Fiona rescued Sydney to weaponize her? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is exactly what I'm saying. And Sergey was getting, I don't know, in her face. It, she, he was, uh, maybe he wanted her seat. And uh, she wanted him gone. What what better way to get him gone than make him frenzy, blood hunt, bish bosh, he's in torpor. I am unfamiliar to the machinations of the vampires in the centuries that she has lived. But uh, it feels like a blunt instrument. I would expect her to have a bigger ambitions. See? And why would she give him to us? To Quintus, huh? To control us? We're new. Maybe she wants uh, some more insurance. The what? 
she wants to make sure that we're on her side whenever okay. whatever happens. Perhaps it has already gone too far and she cannot control it. Maybe. She's just, I mean, you've heard the stories about her. She studies war. Pestilence is part of war. Instead of focusing on the stories, why don't we get the information that no one else has? Yeah. Then we can look back at these pieces and see what we put together and what moves we need to make. There's something else. I don't know. Sebastian and Melanie. Sometimes it's easy to forget because they look like children, but they see more than any of us, I think, realize. Maybe more than we do. With Melanie's gifts, Sebastian's too. They th- they seem certain that Fiona's time is finite. Well, she should have been beckoned long ago. And maybe it's just being held off. Maybe she has some power over it, but maybe that power is going away. <laughs> maybe this is part of it. Part of what she's seeking. But I think we need those tapes. If anything, that the research he has will expedite my own. I will be trying to uncover everything that they worked on in in days when they had months, maybe years. We must find it. Have any of you dealt with First Light up front? I have not. No. There was rumors of scouts in the city after we took it. I never saw them. I don't know for certain that they were here. Well, I've, uh... I've seen some of them up close. The ones that are true believers. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Our storyteller just raised a book slowly above the table that said Second Inquisition. (laughs) I may have gotten the book. (laughs) (laughs) There are some of them. Some of them are in it for whatever. They're, They're in it for the hunt. They don't really know what they're doing, but some of them are true believers that want all of us gone and at any cost. This Kenneth is one of them. And he's at least been in it long enough. He's going to be trouble. More trouble than we know. Is there any research we can do on him? Before we... Well, if Kingsley put the fucking USB in the First Light laptop, I'd have a lot more information, but... Alas. I can do some. I, I have still some contacts. I may have an agent on one of the machines. It's probably old and stale, but... I can try. What do you think about asking Alexander to come with us? He does have connections. And he put his trust in us. See? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. In the woods of Maine, Larry smiles. He would be a useful companion. And there are more. There are other gang girl up there. Maybe they can help out. It would mean that uh, we would likely need to explain everything to him. We've already told some others in the city. Maybe not the whole truth, though. At least to them, but maybe to Alexander. We lay it all out. It is also, could he not be a resource to track down the Sydney here in the city? If he's not banished already. She is a priority for us. Yeah. We have to understand that if it is Fiona on those tapes, our knowledge alone will mark us. Maybe she won't know that we've got it. But as soon as we all see that and we know it, we don't know what powers she has, others loyal to her. Maybe she's keeping an eye on this one. Just know that once we learn our time to make a decision and to make any moves we want may be short. But... It is just something 
About Alexander, I mean. To put out. I know we make decisions together. The question I would again arise is whether we bring him with us here or we use him to track Sydney in the city. We split our resources. Uh, Jake, who does Sydney associate with? You have... You saw Sydney talking to Peter at Elysium. Yeah. Um, you know that Sydney was friendly enough with Sergey that she was his pet sitter. Yeah. <laughs> um, you... You know that she, you, you've seen her with the Daggett sisters. Yeah, Poppy, maybe we should uh, pay a visit to the sisters, see if, uh, see if Sydney stopped by there recently. And um, see? the rumor is that she spends, that she goes to the Black Tower, which is um, Fiona's haven, the Hancock building, um, quite often. Jake, do any of us know, I don't know if it would be Larry, but have any knowledge of what, Kindred or other stuff might be north of Boston. You mean werewolves? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to bring it up. Uh, ooh. You know, you know that there are werewolves. You Fuck know that's that. a thing. And you know that they Yeah, you probably know where their territories are because you probably avoid them. Yeah. The place where you're proposing to go is Right on the border of their territory. Larry want a stuffed looping? <laughs> like within miles, mm -hmm. you know. I, I I probably don't know anything about I don't think Larry would know anything about Gangrel and werewolves. Probably not much. Yeah. I think if Alexander would want to help, he could be useful in either way, but Perhaps we put it to him then. Let him make the decision. What do you think, Javi, Ethan? I mean, um, I feel like a wolf would be more useful in Maine than in Boston, but I mean, he can do shit around here too. Depends on how fast we want to find Sydney. I mean, we can put a word in with the Daggets. Um, I don't know if Peter's uh, made his way over to Kin lately, but you know, if he pops in, can always... Check with him, see if Sydney's been around. Um, Poppy? See, I think Sydney is... Uh, well, if she is the one with the virus, it's a little more important than taking a trip up the main. Yeah, I'm just worried about... <clears throat> if we're going to nab the prince's pet, we're, we're probably going to hear about it. She's definitely going to hear about it. So we need to be real careful how we handle this. We also do not know the prince's intentions with uh, rescuing Sydney, if that is the case, or breaking her out. And that is not for sure. Remember that. Actions we take here will have consequences. If we act without knowledge, we put ourselves at risk. See, ignorance is bliss. You are here. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. I think. Uh, I think it's better if we get that tape. Then we'll know for sure it's Fiona. And we then still will not know her intention, though. Z. Yeah. See? Well, well. And then we know that it was her that protected Sydney. And then when we go for her, we know we coming for the princess pet. Yeah. Without it, we don't. So, mm -hmm. lo siento. And plus, what? You gonna capture her? Torture Sydney for the information? I'm not saying no. any of that. We have questions. What did the prince tell us to do, huh? Quintus, what'd she say when she gave you Sergei? Find out what had happened to him. See? What do we do? We find out what happened. Sydney is a piece of that, no? And she said to leave the club and do nothing. The hotel. See? We are obviously on uh, uncharted ground, yes? Uh, we must do what we think is right. My mic? Oh, no, I was going to say, I think, you, uh, I think you just might have titled this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it? Uncharted, uncharted ground. ground. Oh. Um, he says, uh, 
I I do not mean to to be uh, hyperbolic, yes, but uh, what I have observed is is enough to undo us. It is enough to destroy vampire kind, and I do not have the answer yet as to how to cure it. The research is as critical as the subject. Uh, but is it possible that Sydney also has the cure? It is, but that is still something I would have to unravel. The answer may be in the research there in Maine. Now, now the real question, Quintus, can you get information from Sydney without her figuring out that we know what she is? It is unlikely. She is obviously very involved with this uh, whole process. She, unless her memories have been wiped. Uh, yeah, I mean, Le- I mean, Leonidas, you know, uh, did say to get a you know, blood sample, like the, the Tremere way, not the, the medical doctor way. Uh, but that's probably going to be difficult without. It is something that the, we must face when the time comes. Yes? We? Oui? Larry sta- yeah. stands up and kind of takes some long paces. And he says, I've spent most of my existence, both of them, living in the dark, being affected by things beyond my control and understanding. I'm a part of more now. Especially with you all. I don't want to feel like that again. If there's things we can learn before they are acted upon on us, I want to take the first step. I think that step is in Maine. Yeah, I think so too. Quintus is nodding his head. Or we split the party! (laughs) Well, you could go to Maine and ask Alexander to find Sidney. You do know that he is quite a good hunter. If you hadn't found Sergei, he would have shortly after you. I I still think Alexander would be more help in Maine than here. He he finds Sidney, then what? We need her blood. I mean, if he can get us her blood, then, uh, then we're talking, but... That's a big ask. That is a dangerous proposition. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, we could find our haven, maybe, um, but then we're just going to break in and take some of her blood. That's even worse. That'd be delicate. Maine will give us the information to move against Sydney, perhaps. If we know that she has both the cure and the, and the disease... She becomes all the more important. Yeah. Sounds like the gang's going to Maine. See? But before that, Dan, was there something else you wanted to do? Yeah. After we round the night out and everyone's gone their respective ways, Quintus is sitting alone in his lab. There's a light on overhead. And he stands up and and goes to look inside the cage at Sergei. And then he goes over to his, one of his lab desks and flips through the glass plates and pulls out a sample from, a sample of blood that he drew from Sergei earlier to try to understand the virus. He goes over to another part of his lab, takes a needle, plunges it into his arm, and draws a little blood. He places a dot on a glass plate, slides it into a microscope, one where he can put both slides, his and Sergei's, and compare them. He kind of takes a deep breath. What you actually do is you take a, that syringe of human blood and you put it on the slide next to your own. You look under the microscope and you see that human blood, little pink circles moving around. And next to it, you see your blood, this dark red, 
twitching and moving quickly. And you see it move towards the human blood, begin to envelop it, begin to make it part of yours. And you see the parts start to split off into these red blood cells and you sigh in relief. And then you see one of the pink ones slip free like oil on water. That's where we'll end it. Oh, oh, no. No. Who had Quintus in the frenzy oh. pool? <laughs> he hasn't frenzied yet. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. It's looking good. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Boston Masquerade on the Nastagram RPG podcast. Now we'd love to hear more from you. Find and follow us online. We are at Nastagram RPG on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook.com slash Nastagram, or the Nastagram RPG Lounge for our community on Facebook, r slash Nastagram on Reddit, and at Nastagram2053 on YouTube. Or just go to the website, NastagramRPG.com, and you can link out to all those sites there. If you don't mess around with any of that social media bullshit, good on you. We'd still love to hear from you. Email us at nastygrampod at gmail.com. And finally, no matter what, we would beg, implore, and plead you to rate and review us, preferably at Apple Podcasts or whatever it is they call iTunes these days. And also just talk about us. Talk about us with your friends, anybody that you think would appreciate tabletop RPGs, or just telling good stories. Thanks again, and we will see you next Tuesday. That's nasty.